What is the love-hate relationship people seem to have with the new Mac Pro? Many people just love the new design. Others just love the features and specs. There seems to be a mystique that just draws people in. A certain allure of the design to those who are not even acquainted with the previous Mac Pro. While it returns to its previous form as a traditional tower, certain design elements make it unique and unlike anything else. And past users are just fully enamored to have the Mac Pro back and are ready to throw every demanding task its way. What is it about the new Mac Pro that people love to hate? Well, the general public makes fun of it for its highest price configuration of more than $50,000. PC enthusiasts love to remind us of how they can build a computer that is faster for a fraction of the price. Apple haters just love to make fun of Apple and their high-priced products, and the high price of the new Mac Pro gives them some great material. People who love Mac OS but don't love the all-in-one computers that they have transitioned to in the last decade have really been yearning for this new modular Mac Pro. Since April of 2017, when Apple execs admitted to a small grouping of the tech press that they had failed with the previous trash can Mac Pro and were committed to a new modular Mac Pro, many people have waited for the modularity again. However, they feel like they were betrayed when the entry-level price of the Mac Pro doubled. I was one of those people. For me, I really love the idea of having an upgradable Mac computer, even if it costs more money than the last model. However, the $6,000 price tag is a bit steep. It caused me great pause, as it was 50% higher than I was expecting. I needed to understand why. Maybe in some small way to rationalize the price. So I began to do some research on the components within. And I quickly learned that these are not ordinary off-the-shelf parts that you can just purchase online or at your local computer store. If you don't believe me, then try to purchase these components. Xeon W3200 series of CPUs from 8 cores all the way up to 28 cores and comes with a large LGA3647 server socket. This is not your ordinary CPU. Six channels of ECC RAM. A large custom motherboard with eight PCIe slots and using the Intel C621 chipset. Two 10 gigabyte ethernet ports. Radeon Pro graphics cards. A 1.4 kilowatt power supply. That's 1400 watts. All wrapped in a package with no cables that is super quiet even under full load. Now Intel never intended to sell its Xeon W CPUs to the general public. Intel targets the Xeon W, where the W stands for workstation, to businesses for creative workflows in commercial and corporate environments. These environments demand reliability with 24-7 operation along with other enterprise features needed for deployment. This is not an upgradable computer or even a high-end upgradable computer. This is a workstation. This workstation is designed to perform tasks that would cripple high-end computers. It is designed to work effortlessly and not slow down the creative flow of its user. Apple redefined the new Mac Pro to be a high-end workstation and they will charge high-end workstation prices. Apple should have called this the Mac Pro workstation or even the Mac Pro W. To understand if the new Mac Pro is something you should consider, then ask yourself this question. Do I need a workstation? Now, if you have to ask what is a workstation, then no. Only those that can respond quickly with an affirmative yes should consider this new Mac Pro. Creatives who use a computer every day know when a computer is holding them back. They know when having something more powerful will greatly improve their output. That is who should consider the new Mac Pro. With that said, the base $6,000 computer with 8 cores and the Radeon Pro 580X GPU is rather unremarkable as a workstation. Other computers with 8 cores in Apple's lineups are just as capable. Looking at the Geekbench scores and Cinebench R20 scores, you can see that the 8-core Mac Pro is not better than the 8-core iMac Pro or the 8-core i9 iMac. The Mac Pro should have started at 12 cores and the Navi-based W5700X GPU 
as the base model since that is beyond anything else available. Why would Apple even create the base 8 core configuration? I do not know. Apple does what Apple does. In my research, I stumbled upon information that can explain why Apple does not focus on building less expensive and expandable desktop computers, the one I and many others desire. It just comes down to return on investment. The traditional desktop computer segment is dying. In this chart from Joe Petty Research, where it shows sales of computers over the last decade, where the blue line represents personal computers, the trend shows that since around 2014, sales of desktop computers are declining. People are transitioning out of the desktop computers in droves and moving into mobiles like the MacBook Pro or iPad Pro. Even Apple admits that less than 20% of its computers sold are desktops. Steve Jobs even predicted this trend in an interview way back in 2010. However, sales of workstations represented by the red line have been on the rise in recent years. That is the growth segment Apple is targeting. While the desktop computer segment represents hundreds of millions of units, the workstations represent just millions of units, with the difference being the workstation typically costs an order of magnitude greater in price. That's five figures or tens of thousands of dollars for each unit, and it provides a much higher profit margin for Apple. Consider this, if you were an Apple investor today, which segment would you want Apple to target? It is a harsh reality that explains why I may never see the expandable Apple desktop computer that I and many others desire. Some people have called this Apple's hypercar, but it's not. It's not a fast, sporty, exotic, expensive car. It's a big, heavy, power-hungry Mack truck-like machine that will haul heavy loads all day long, every day, for years and years to come. However, it's also very elegant in how it was engineered compared to any other workstation out there. One thing is for certain, it's absolute overkill for most users who just need a pickup truck. For me, I don't need a workstation of this caliber. I am not the targeted 1% of users. I just need a new computer, a computer that will easily edit and store 4K videos, and it must be an upgradable computer that runs Mac OS. I know I could build a PC that is expandable, however, I don't plan on leaving the Mac ecosystem just yet. In this series, I will assemble several alternatives to the Mac Pro workstation. The key feature is that they must be upgradable by me anytime in the future. My journey will take several paths from buying new, upgrading old, and considering the potential scenarios if Apple created a desktop using other available platforms. Finding the right combination of parts at the right price will be important as well. I always enjoy the challenge to extract the maximum amount of value with the least amount of money. That is it for part one in this multi-part series. If you found it informational, hit the like button. If you are in a similar situation and want to learn more, join me on this journey by hitting the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you'll know when the next video is released. Share this video with others that may also find it educational. Finally, in the comment section below, let me know, have you thought of the new Mac Pro as an expensive computer or as a workstation? Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.